Hello, hi, I'm Ben, welcome back to my channel and welcome to the World Cup of Books. Yes, today we are going to be appropriating some straight male culture and making it all about reading. Just kidding, football isn't just for straight men, it's for everyone. Unless you are gay, in which case you should just respect Qatari culture and forbid rainbows or something, I can't remember, whatever the government said. Some of you may well be boycotting this year's World Cup because of the controversy surrounding FIFA and Qatar, the circumstances in which Qatar were awarded the World Cup, and then their exploitation of migrant workers to make it happen. I'm hoping that this video can bring just a small bit of levity to what should be the world's biggest celebration of sport, maybe second only to the Olympics. This video is inspired by some ones that I've seen on other channels. So Emma over at Drinking By My Shelf did, I think, the first one of these um, where she pitted her favourite books from the year against each other. And then there's this little known YouTuber who you might not have heard of called Jack Edwards. Um, he did his 3.75 and 4 star reads and put them head to head in a battle to, not the death, to victory, glory, I don't know, one of those things. I won't spoil who won those, but I will link those videos down in the description. But don't go just yet, because one, you'll mess with my metrics, and two, you will miss out on the fun. Those were both awesome videos. I really enjoyed watching them. I thought it'd be fun to do my own take on this video, but instead of using books that I liked from this year, I could instead use books by authors from the actual countries that actually made it through to the knockout stages of the World Cup. Well, there's one exception where I've used a book just set in one of the countries. I've also made a lovely Miro board to track the scores on the doors to see who makes it through in this literary knockout stage. And I'll switch to that now. Hopefully you can see my screen. Oh, I feel like I'm on a work meeting now. Can everyone see my screen? Am I on mute? Yep, yeah, so this is uh, how we're gonna track who's winning and who is losing. Let's get right into it. So the first head to head is the Netherlands versus the USA. Uh, so representing the Netherlands, The Discomfort of Evening by Marika Lucas Reineveld. Uh, and representing the USA, I realize I've read quite a lot of books recently from American authors. So I'm turning to the trusty internet to decide for me which of those books, because I don't just want to pick my favourite and then it automatically has an advantage in the competition. So here we are with our World Cup spinner. These are all the American books I've read over the last year. Ooh, that is interesting because this is a book I gave five stars and I just said that I didn't want it to be. <laughs> I didn't want it to be like a book that's just going to walk the tournament but you know it's in the hands of the gods so we'll we'll deal with it. Okay and by the magic of not live tv uh, we now have our face-to-face. -face. Two women with their faces partially covered. Between them they actually make like a whole face. Maybe they're the same character. Who knows? Look, she's covered up to her nose. She's covered up from her nose. If I had time and the willingness, I would almost certainly Photoshop this together. Uh, but I don't and I won't. The bad news for the Netherlands is that I really hated The Discomfort of Evening. It's a Booker Prize winner and a lot of people like it. A lot of people love how bleak it is. Don't get me wrong, I'm a sucker for punishment. I do love A Little Life. I haven't spoken about it on this channel yet, but I'm, I'm, I'm team Hanya. I, I'm a big fan of A Little Life. So this should be right on my street, but I just found it really gratuitous, weird. Like there are scenes with her dad pulling shit out of her ass. And I, I just didn't want to read about it, to be totally honest. So Discomfort of Evening, I'm not gonna lie, it's the underdog here. On the other hand, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, I resisted this because of the sort of bookstagram, book talk uh, fanfare around it. I have not yet become a member of the Taylor Jenkins Reid fan club, uh, but I read this and it really surprised me. I absolutely loved its depiction of old Hollywood and it had a lot of intrigue, it had real characters. Um, 
I haven't dived any deeper into the TJR multiverse yet, but I will do at some point. I'm afraid for the Netherlands, this is like full on 6-0 to the USA. The Netherlands is crashing out of this tournament at the first hurdle and, and our girl, Evelyn Hugo, is progressing to the next round. Okay, next up, we are zooming in to Australia versus Argentina and representing Australia. I'd only read one Australian book, which kind of surprised me. I thought I might have read more, um, but sadly for Australia, that book is Shantaram, an 800 page uh, owed by Gregory David Roberts to himself and how great it is. It's a semi-autobiographical exploration of his own um, experience, I think, coming out of prison and then going to India. I don't know if you can tell by my tone about my <laughs> my feelings about this book. Uh, representing Argentina, again, I'd only read one Argentinian book, and that book is Mariana Enriquez's The Dangers of Smoking in Bed, which I read quite recently, actually. It's in my November wrap-up, and this is a collection of horror short stories. Shantaram is a pile of crap. I'm really sorry to those who like it. I'm sure all of its many fans have been enjoying watching Charlie Hunnam bring it to life on Apple TV, but I read this while I was traveling many years ago and I, I just hated it. I thought it would be really appropriate for what I was doing with my own life and it's just, it's really badly written. Every character's the same. Every character is insufferable. And I know that the plot is supposed to be riveting, but I just could not push through. I think I gave up about 150 pages in because it was a waste of my life. The Dangers of Smoking in Bed, on the other hand, is a lovely little collection of things that will unsettle you. Not in the way that does the discomfort of evening unsettles you, um, in, in a way that is generally quite scary and politically charged and has something to say and is often just a joy to read sentence to sentence. So Argentina, you have got this in the bag. Messi has scored a little hat trick for Argentina here. Australia might have conceded an own goal, I'm not sure. Next up is Japan versus Croatia. Representing Japan is Mieko Kawakami's Heaven. And representing Croatia is uh, Dasa Drindic's Doppelganger. Another one that's sadly going to be very one-sided. Heaven is another really quite brutal book that is all about bullying. I found it very emotionally powerful and I thought it was a really good read. It's quite a short book, but it packs a lot in. And Kawakami does this really interesting thing that basically pits some different philosophies against each other and those get embodied by certain characters in the book. If you have read it, there is a really good article that goes into depth about, about what she's doing. Uh, and it made me appreciate the book so much more. And then we come to Doppelganger. And Doppelganger is one that I had to read this week. Um, it, it took me quite a while to find a Croatian book, actually, that I would be able to read in time to include in this video. But this seems like quite a celebrated book and a celebrated author. Um, Dasa Drindic sadly died a couple of years ago, and I think she might have been someone in the running for a Nobel at some point. It's made up of a short story about two old people and then a novella, which is about a man who lives with his father and some bad things before him. And I'm not gonna lie, it was just, it's really, it was really unpleasant for me to read. I felt like I was in the mind of a really anxious person. And as, <laughs> as an anxious person myself, I don't need that in my life. So yeah, I, I think Doppelganger is, is out. Doppelganger's gone. They scored, they scored one goal. They, they scored one goal. It was like a, it was like a 4-1 to Japan. Japan go through. Okay, we're on to Brazil versus South Korea. Representing Brazil is Ways to Disappear by Idra Novi. Now this is the book that is not written by an author from the country. Idra Novi is an American author, but the book itself is set in Brazil and it's about a Brazilian author that disappears and her tr long-standing translator 
um, that she collaborates with goes in search of, of her. And representing South Korea is The Plotters by Unsu Kim, which is a bit of a literary thriller about a, a an assassin who I can't even remember if he's trying to get out. I don't know if it's the one last job trope. I think at some point he considers, how do I get out of the business? Okay, this is the first tie that is somewhat evenly matched. I know you shouldn't judge a book by its cover, but Ways to Disappear just has an absolutely beaut cover and the physical book itself is published by Dawn Books and they just make the best books. The paper is thick, the cardstock for the covers is, is lovely and it's folded over so you get like that double, um, double thickness cover. It's really lovely and I'm gonna stop because I sound a little bit like American Psycho when they're talking about their business cards. That's probably one goal for Brazil. The Plotters does have a good cover, but head to head probably doesn't win out. It's interesting because I think these are both kind of almost genre books that are trying to do something a little bit different, a little bit more literary with their genre. Ways to Disappear is a bit of a mystery. The Plotters is a bit of a thriller. I read both of these a while ago and um, Ways to Disappear really hasn't stuck in my head quite as much. Like I don't remember it having like quite a satisfying ending or, or really remembering what that ending is. I think it was a little bit meandering, a little bit navel gazing. The Plotters, on the other hand, I think it was a really good fun ride and I really remember the characters, I really remember many of the main story beats and I think I think it's it's close, but after the early lead that Brazil took 1-0 on the cover, I think South Korea are going to turn it around with, with a couple of goals in the second half. And particularly when like right near the final whistle, they're going to win it at the end because it's got a much more satisfying conclusion. So South Korea are going to take it and move into the quarterfinals. And we've got two books here going head to head from France and Poland. So representing France is Albert Camus, The Outsider. And representing Poland, I will say, I'm surprised at how much Polish fiction I've read. Um, I almost included uh, Swimming in the Dark, but I thought this would be a little bit more fun. Uh, Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead by Olga Tokarczyk. So these are, interestingly, two books about outsiders. Um, on the French side, Camus is is a bit more of a, an existentialist. This is a bit more of a philosophical novel. It's got an iconic opening line. In fact, it probably scores a goal like within the first two minutes because um, it's got one of one of the the best opening lines. Drive Your Plow is a book about an old lady who lives in a very small village, and there's some mysterious deaths going on and both the the village and she within the village they're 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 all like outsiders in a way i have to say i don't love this book as much as a lot of people do i i thought it was fun i enjoyed reading it um the the protagonist in the book i can't remember her name but she's a really interesting character with an interesting perspective and backstory um and it's just quite a lot of fun oh my god i just realized that both of these authors are Nobel Prize winners. So this is the battle of the Nobels. We're gonna eliminate a Nobel Prize winner here. Nuts. I'm gonna to have to go with my gut here. And I think I, I'm more here for plot and engagement during the reading than I am for philosophy, uh, than I am for philosophy. Ask me on another day and maybe I'll make another decision. But in the heat of the moment, I think Poland are gonna come through with the win in 90 minutes, no extra time, no penalties. Um, they're through to the next round. All right, our next match is England versus Senegal. As with the American authors, I don't have a selected English book yet and I wanted it to be fair and up to the will of the wheel. And here are all of the books by English authors that I have read this year. So we're gonna give this a spin and see who comes out with the win. Who has qualified?
That's very interesting for England. We've got Brighton Rock by Graham Greene. And representing Senegal is At Night All Blood is Black by David Diop. David Diop is actually a French author, but his father was Senegalese and he was brought up in Senegal for some portion of his childhood. He might, he might actually have dual citizenship, I'm not sure, but it felt like an appropriate book to represent Senegal. And he also won the International Booker Prize for this book. Brighton Rock, I read earlier this year for my book club and I did not enjoy it at all. Another really rubbish representative of <laughs> its nation's literature here. Um, I know Graham Greene is a national treasure um, in many people's eyes. Um, to me, I've only read Brighton Rock and I found it just a slog to get through. It was so boring. Despite so much happening, there is investigation and death and um, double crossing and uh, pent up male anger. I just didn't enjoy the writing style. England haven't scored. Surprise, surprise. Senegal, on the other hand, uh, with At Night All Blood is Black. This is a book about, well, principally about one soldier whose friend has just died. He is part of a contingent of soldiers from Senegal fighting on behalf of France because Senegal was colonised by, by France. And I honestly found it so powerful, vivid, um, emotional, like it really made me feel stuff. Um, so this is an absolute hands down whitewash. Senegal, I've just really smashed England. I'm sorry. Okay, next up is Morocco versus Spain and representing Morocco is Lullaby by Leila Slimani. Um, Leila Slimani is uh, a French Moroccan author. And then representing Spain, we have got Talking to Ourselves by Andres Newman. Now, both of these books are ones that I, I also had to read very recently in order to make this book happen. I am shocked that I've never read the Spanish author. Like, how has that, how has that happened? There must be so many. Anyway, Lullaby is a domestic thriller. I actually expected this to be more of a thriller. This was in the crime and thriller section in Waterstones but it was very much like a character study. It's essentially about two children that are murdered right at the start of the book, and then a look back at uh, their experiences with their, with their nanny. Talking to Ourselves is also a, a short novella, and it is a book told from three perspectives, all dealing with, I guess, the coming death of the father because he's been diagnosed with it with an incurable illness and I am so torn on this book I did I gave I gave it four stars because there were moments that were just like so emotionally overwhelming it wasn't like a crescendo where everything came to a head it, it were these small moments of characters reflecting on the situation that they found themselves in and I just oh it, it like it scared me it made me think about my own mortality the challenge here is that I liked both of these books. I would recommend both of these books to people. I'm actually surprised because when I closed Andres Newman's book, I thought this is special. But now I am thinking that I'm gonna give it to I'm gonna give it to Lullaby. I, Morocco is gonna make it through to the next round. Okay, our final round of 16 tie then is. Portugal versus Switzerland, and representing Portugal is maybe Portugal's finest novelist, maybe one of the world's finest novelists. I think maybe another Nobel Prize winner. Cool, we are littered with those in this competition. Jose Saramago and his book, Death at Intervals. And representing Switzerland is Joel Dicker's The Truth About the Harry Cuba Affair. And would you have it? This is another tie where I detest one of these books and it may be, <laughs> maybe how I introduced <laughs> Jose Saramago, I've already given it away. Um, but yes, The Truth About the Harry Cuba Affair is another of these books where the author has clearly based the character on himself 
and absolutely loves himself. He thinks he's the bee's knees and I just couldn't take it. It's another one I didn't finish. So I could say anything about uh, Death at Intervals and it's still going through. Luckily, I did enjoy Death at Intervals. It's a magical realism story about a country in which death just stops. He takes, he takes some time off. People stop dying and it plays that scenario out to the point of absurdity and it's good fun. It asks really interesting questions about mortality and the function of death in society. And I read it a really long time ago, but it's really stuck in my head. And I, I, I like this book quite a lot. So Portugal, absolutely smashed Switzerland. Um, Switzerland, I, I reckon Switzerland maybe had like, I don't know, 10% possession. They didn't even barely touch the ball. Okay, we have our quarter finalists. We've weeded out half of the books and now we have to do it all over again. So let's dive in to our quarter final ties. Uh, we've got USA versus Argentina. The Seven Husbands, the Seven Husbands, I'm on EastEnders. Uh, the Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo versus The Dangers of Smoking in Bed. I cannot argue with Taylor Jenkins Reid's ability to like pull you into a story. I was hooked. I think I think the USA in this game, they just had the traction. They like had the crowd in the palm of their hands and, and the support, the support from the crowd was just overwhelming and Argentina just couldn't get a look in. So the USA is gonna progress to the next round. Next up, we have got a Southeast Asian battle on our hands. We've got Japan versus South Korea. So heaven versus the plotters. And this is, I'm not gonna lie, a tough one. It is a tough one. I have all, <laughs> just in this video said, I'm less interested in philosophical books than I am uh, plot driven books. Maybe the tides are turning because heaven, heaven is a bit more philosophical, but it's just like so evocative. This is hard. What's the plot has got going on? The plot has got really interesting main character. He's got a lot more agency than the protagonist of Heaven. And I like that. You want a character that's making their own path. That's that's always enjoyable to read. I think I just like what Kawakami did in Heaven. And there were some like absolutely brutal scenes that have, that have stayed with me in a way that mm, Things in the plot just hasn't in the same way, although I enjoyed that book. So I think Japan had just tipped it. Perhaps in penalties. I reckon this one, I reckon this one went to penalties. Japan have it, they are through to the semi-finals. A historic victory on to quarterfinal number three. We've got Poland versus Senegal. Drive Your Plow versus At Night or Blood is Black. I think this one's a little more clear cut because at Night All Blood is Black is an absolute banger. It is so good. And I just think Nobel Prize winner Olga Tokarczyk can compete. Who would have thought that sentence would come out of my mouth? Yeah, Drive Your Plow is, 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 a, is a really good book. But I, I just think At Night All Blood is Black is so powerful. It's so visceral. It's already won, in a way. It's won this time. And then our final tie in the quarterfinals is Leila Slamani's Lullaby versus Jose, no, Jose, Portuguese pronunciation, Jose Saramago's Death at Intervals, domestic thriller versus magical realism. And neither of those are really my usual lane. So this is an interesting comparison. They're very different books. I think what Saramago does in his novel is a little bit more accomplished. It's a really amusing book. The cartoon cover might suggest this, but um, it's it's funny and ironic and a pleasure to read. Lullaby was also really good to read, but it just, it had no humour at all. And I know this isn't the humour World Cup, but sometimes a bit of light relief is good. So I think Jose Saramago is gonna take it because he deals deftly with death. <laughs> And although we've got Morocco's murderer representing them, they sadly didn't kill it in this quarterfinal and they just got edged out. 
Sorry, Morocco. And with that, we are down to our final four. Uh, so we've got the USA and Japan, and we've got Senegal and Portugal, which is actually really good. We've got good coverage across the continents. Right, so we've got USA versus Japan in this semi-final. Seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo versus heaven. Evelyn Hugo is, is probably the stronger book of the two here. Oh my God. Yeah, so I think, I think the USA has it. I don't know if I'm happy about this because this is like, I shouldn't be unhappy, right? That a popular book is doing well. Okay, and our final semi-final, our final semi-final? God blimey. Um, our, our penultimate match and our last semi-final, that works. Uh, we've got Senegal versus Portugal. So at Night of Blows Black versus Death at Intervals. Both of these books are top notch. These are two very strong contenders. So I'm just gonna have to go with my gut. And my gut is saying, Senegal, take this round. It, it, this is like a, this is maybe like a 4-3 thriller where they're both just like smashing goals in. Uh, both at the top of their game. But in the end, Senegal just clinched the win. So Senegal are through in a blaze of glory. Do you go through in a blaze of glory? No, Portugal go out in a blaze of glory, but Senegal go through with a joyful victory. So after all of that, we have our finalists. Look at those books being whittled down. Um, but it's down to the last two. And we've got the USA versus Senegal. We've got the seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo, versus At Night or Blood is Black. Maybe the two longest titles as well in this. Is that an indicator of how good a book is? Maybe. Great, I have no idea how I'm gonna decide this. It's just gonna have to be on feeling. They're two very different books, but in some ways do kind of similar things. They are very evocative of a certain time and place. They flesh out characters in these books exceptionally well. They tell stories of outsiders pulled into worlds that that feel alien to them and make them into something they're not. And they're both bloody cracking. So to be honest, the real the real winner here is is literature. But this 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 game, there's been there's been plenty of goals. The USA scored Senegal scored. USA scored again, but Senegal brought it level. We hit the end of regular time and we headed into extra time. Senegal went ahead, but then the USA pulled it back. And we've come to the end of extra time and it's down to penalties. And although both teams are great at penalties, they, they've got the best penalty takers in the competition. Um, at the end of the game, it's Senegal that have taken the title. So there we have it, 16 countries battled it out and Senegal ended up as the victors defeating the USA in the final. At Night All Blood is Black is a super worthy winner of this title. It was actually quite good fun to go through all of those and revisit some books that I haven't read in a while. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed coming along for the ride. And if you did, I would appreciate it if you were to give this video a like. If you want to see more of my content, hit subscribe. And now is your chance to go and watch the videos from Drinking By Myself and Jack Edwards. Until next time, toodles.